The starship Avalon is on course for the colony world of Homestead 2. The journey will take 120 years as the ship flies on autopilot. There are 258 crew members and 5,000 passengers in hibernation. The ship collides with a giant meteor and repairs itself but cannot fix a broken hibernation pod. Jim wakes up from hibernation and is greeted by the ship's computer telling him they're four months from Homestead 2. He's led to his cabin and experiences hibernation sickness. Jim gets dressed and is told to head to a lecture for his passenger group. There's no one else in the room. He begins to panic. He goes to the main floor but can't find anyone. He walks into the observatory and discovers that he's only been asleep for 30 years and it will take 90 years before the Avalon arrives at Homestead 2. Jim tries to send a message to Earth, but it will take 55 years to receive a response. He sees a bartender, Arthur, and is relieved until he realizes Arthur is an android. Jim asks what to do if a pod malfunctions. Arthur says the pods are fail-safe and one breaking is impossible. Jim's a mechanical engineer and tries to fix his pod, but it doesn't work. He can open the control or crew hibernation rooms, no matter what tools he uses. Errors show up on the ship system. Jim has a drink at the bar. Arthur advises him to stop worrying about what he can control and live a little. Jim opens a fancy suite and tries out all the entertainment activities the ship offers. Over time, these activities become boring. He's lonely and has nothing to live for. Jim drinks liquor while walking through the passenger pods. He drops the bottle and finds spacesuits that allow him to walk outside the spaceship. He floats in space with amazement. Back on the ship, Jim takes off his suit and is about to open the airlock with no tether or life support, but stops himself. He walks through the pods and trips on his liquor bottle. The bottle ends up next to the pod of a woman named Aurora. Jim is immediately interested in her. She's a writer. He reads everything she wrote and watches all videos about her on the ship log. He thinks Aurora is perfect. Jim gets the idea to wake her up from hibernation. He asks Arthur for advice, but the android can't give him an answer. He wants to wake her up, but knows it's wrong. He eventually gives in to the desire to meet Aurora. Jim brings her out of hibernation. He hides evidence of what he's done and tries to calm down. He meets her on the main floor and says the same thing happened to him a year before. Aurora freaks out and wants to return to hibernation, but it's impossible. Jim tells her to rest. She thinks it must have been hard for him to be alone and says goodnight. Jim speaks to Arthur and wants to keep the truth of what he did a secret. He wants to tell her himself. Aurora is trying to figure out a solution by looking up information on pod malfunctions, but is told that no pod has ever broken. There are more malfunctions not being fixed on the ship. Aurora discusses ways to fix their problem, but Jim has tried everything she mentions. She isn't ready to give up. She tries to find information and equipment to help her hibernate but the knowledge of the process is kept a secret from passengers. Jim sees a cleaning bot malfunction. Aurora keeps a log of her journey and speaks about Jim accepting their fate. She's scared to live out her life on this ship, with her only companion being a stranger. She asks Jim why he left Earth, so she can write about the first person to experience a pod malfunction. Everything was okay on Earth, but people replace things instead of fixing them. He believes he can be useful on a new planet that needs him. Aurora planned to live on Homestead 2 for a year before returning to Earth as the first person to ever travel to and from a colony planet. 
She expected to return to Earth in 241 years with an exciting story. Jim and Aurora try all the entertainment options the ship has to offer. They have fun together. Aurora meets Arthur and heads to bed. Arthur congratulates Jim on his choice. Jim invites Aurora on a date and she agrees. They have dinner and she talks about her father being an award-winning writer who wrote about his adventures. She hoped her journey through space would be her adventure. Jim shows her the spacesuits and they walk outside the ship. Aurora is amazed as they float together in space. They get back to the ship and make love. They build a life together and enjoy falling in love. Aurora writes about Jim and how happy they are. She doesn't think they'd be together on Earth, and this isn't the life they planned, but it's theirs. For the first time in her life, she doesn't feel alone. It's Aurora's birthday, and they have drinks at Arthur's bar. She tells Arthur there are no secrets between her and Jim. Arthur asks if that's true. Jim says it is. He goes to the bathroom and looks at a ring he made. Arthur tells Aurora how excited Jim was to meet her a year ago. She asks how that's possible. Arthur says Jim spent months deciding whether to wake her up, and it was the hardest decision of his life, but it worked out just fine. Jim returns and Aurora confronts him. He admits to what he did. She leaves and tells him to stay away from her. She goes back to their suite and cries. When Jim gets there, all her things are gone. He tries to talk to her, but she refuses to speak with him. She attacks him in bed and is about to hit him with a crowbar, but she stops herself. Aurora goes for a run as Jim tries to talk to her over the intercom. He was alone and wanted to kill himself the night he first saw her. Jim believes she saved his life. There is no excuse for what he did. He fell in love as he learned more about her, and his life suddenly had meaning. Jim wishes he could take it back and doesn't want to lose her. She's angry and doesn't care about his reasons because he took her life. There are more glitches in the ship system. Time passes. Aurora sits at the bar and speaks with Arthur. She envies the fact that he has a purpose. Arthur asks how her book's coming along. Jim arrives, so she leaves. Aurora watches videos her friends recorded for her. Her best friend talks about how she was never happy on Earth and hopes she finds something or someone that allows her to see that she's enough as she is. She goes down to the main floor and finds Jim planted a living tree for her. Jim is in the elevator and it stops. Aurora tries to have breakfast, but the machine malfunctions. Jim crawls out of the elevator. Deck Chief Gus speaks over the intercom and asks who planted a tree on his ship. Aurora and Jim find him on the main floor. He had hibernation failure too and asks how far along they are. Gus takes them to the control room and says something is wrong with the ship. He can find diagnostic data. They've been awake for two years. Gus has them split up and check on different sections of the ship. Gus checks on the crew and passenger pods and realizes Jim opened Aurora's pod. Gus says he understands why Jim did it, but still thinks it's wrong. Aurora tries to have Gus do something about Jim waking her up and calls it murder. He says that a drowning man will always bring someone down with him. Gus feels ill and heads to his room, coughing up blood. Aurora goes swimming. The entire ship loses gravity. She can't escape from the mass of floating water. The system returns to normal. She gasps for air and goes looking for Gus. A cascade failure happened the same day Jim woke up. The entire ship will shut down if they don't find the issue. 
Gus faints as they are about to search the engineering section. The autodoc scans Gus and reveals he has 612 disorders due to his hibernation pod malfunctioning. The autodoc won't give him more information, so he uses his ID bracelet as an override. He's got a few hours left to live. Gus walks away as he comes to term with what's happening. Jim and Aurora find Gus in the observatory. He wants them to stay with him and says they should care for each other. He gives them his ID bracelet and asks them to fix his ship. He's dressed in full uniform and Aurora says he looks magnificent. Gus dies. Serious system failures happen. Jim and Aurora figure out that the main issue is in the power plant. Jim opens the door manually, but there's a hole in the ship and Aurora is sucked through the door. He's caught too and kicks something to her that blocks the hole long enough for him to seal it. There were many holes from hitting the meteor and the reactor control computer was broken. Jim finds the right tools and machinery to fix the system, but they can't vent the reactor as it starts overheating. The outer door is jammed, and Jim decides to open it from outside the ship. He gives Gus's bracelet to Aurora, and she helps him dress in the spacesuit. He takes a door with him as a heat shield. Before he goes, she asks him to come back to her, as she can't live on the ship without him. Aurora goes back to the reactor room. Bolts fly, and one hits her in the arm. Jim gets to the vent. Aurora takes out the bolt and bandages her arm. Jim tries to open the vent door, but it's not working. He'll have to stay and hold it open. Aurora doesn't want him to stay and says she'll die without him. Jim says there are 5,000 people on the ship and she must vent the reactor. He reassures her it's okay and she cries as she pulls the lever. Jim screams as the fire affects his suit. He's thrown into space and his rope comes loose. He throws his heat shield to stop himself from going through the thrusters. His suit pressure drops. Aurora is relieved to hear him, but he says he can't get back on the ship. His oxygen level is dropping. She rushes to save him. Jim says he's sorry and wishes they could have met in 90 years. He could have built her a house and read her book. Aurora puts on her spacesuit and can find Jim, but her rope isn't long enough. Luckily, his rope floats past her and she grabs it. She gets him back on the ship and into the auto dock. It says he's dead and won't try to bring him back to life. Aurora uses Gus's bracelet and remembers his ID code. She overrides the system and has him brought back to life. She's happy and kisses him. The Avalon is fixed and carries on towards Homestead too. Jim shows Aurora they can use Gus's ID bracelet to put her back into hibernation in the auto dock. He says she'll wake up on Homestead too and can write her book. Aurora's worried he'll be alone, but Jim says he's done it before and will be fine. Jim sits alone with Arthur and looks at the ring he made for Aurora. She arrives at the bar and he proposes. They swim together in the pool and Aurora says it's a hell of a life. At Homestead 2, 88 years later, the crew wakes up and finds the main floor filled with plants animals, and the house Jim built. Aurora writes to the passengers about the beautiful life they had together 